You, you, you are now listening to Lower Road Radio. Hey, welcome one and all to the number one podcast, winter, spring, and fall. Talking sports for the thrill of it all. Hey, talking life, but we're killing it all. Jason and Dan with the master plan. These are dangerous men with the mic in the hand. Huh? Bona fide winners everywhere that we go. You're a part of the team. Lower Road Radio. Dad life, thug life, bright lights in sight. All right, what? Dad life, thug life, bright lights in sight. All right, yeah. Dad life, thug life, bright lights in sight. All right, what? Bona fide winners everywhere that we go. You're a part of the team. Lower Road Radio. Let's get it. What? At Tanagra, when the walls fell, this is Dan Owings coming at you another time for Lower Road Radio with my co-host, as always, Jason. You got some nerds, you got some Kirkland brand sparkling blue raspberry something or other. How you doing today? Gross and bloated. Has nothing to do with these two things, although maybe it does. Yeah. Uh, my son and I, who's he's 10 years old, uh-huh. just went through White Castle. Yeah, you did. And uh, if you're part of the country, or part of the world, rather, that doesn't know what that is, I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for you. White Castle's probably the greatest restaurant that has ever existed. How many How many did you eat? First of all, let's just get this out of the way. If you go to White Castle and you order anything except for the regular sliders, don't order any specialty no. burger. Don't... It's just their regular sliders. Just, I'll take the slider the There's way it is. no reason to get cheese on it. No. There's no reason to get anything other than pickles, chopped onions, burger on the little bun. Listen, you don't order it special. I will take X number of sliders. I don't want anything chicken. I don't want your fish slider. I don't want your chicken slider. All that – White Castle will actually, I think, be more successful if they only sold those. I agree. Anyway, how many, how many, do you, how many okay, did you Okay, so get? what I wanted to do, uh-huh. I wanted to eat 10. Okay. Because that's a standard order. Yes. I'll take a case, a box of 10. Yeah. Um, although I didn't want to be sick. You know, because there's yeah. a number, and that's I don't know what That's the tightrope that... that you walk when See, you eat White Castle. That's the problem is I don't what? know where that number is. I feel like it's three. I feel like if I eat more than three, I'm going to feel it later. Yeah. So I did. We, we're pulling through the drive-thru. I look at Gideon. He's in the front seat. He looks at me. I turn to the window. I said, I'll take 16 White Castles. Okay. We pull through. He's like, does that mean I get eight and you get eight? Yeah. And I'm like, let's just see. Come on. Before we divvy it up, let's just see what let's happens. Let's just see. Let's right. just see what happens. Because my yeah. thought was if he gets six, I'll go ahead and do ten. Right. Or if he's like flying through them, uh-huh. maybe I'll only do six and he does ten. Sure. Like I'm pretty loose with this. And the, and the possibilities are almost endless. Well, I mean up to a combination of 16. <laughs> I mean it could be 15 and one. Uh-huh. 14 could and two. 14 and two. Uh huh. Thirteen and three. Yeah. Continue. Twelve and four. Let's just finish this thing off. Eleven and five. But then you've also got your ten and six option. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Then there's nine and seven. Well, yeah. Then your classic. Eight and eight. Uh huh. Right. So that's that's but, it. But then it could go the other direction. Well. Then it could go eight you're and talking, nine. You're eight and nine. Yeah. Yeah. You're yes, seven and nine. And yeah. You know. Oh, for and sure. Then, yeah. You know. I mean, you could split one. Six and ten. Well, yeah. Quarters, halves, mm-hmm. thirds. You could go seven and a half and eight and a half. <laughs> Metric system. Yeah. Then yeah. I mean, there's all sorts of things. Things get out of control. So um, we go through. I get 16. I am eating them just as fast as he is, and they are sliding down. Yeah, they do. Well, that's the thing about a slider. They're a slider. Uh-huh. And they literally slid right through. Yeah, and, they did. And uh, I feel gross and bloated. Yeah. I regret. I immediately regret. So how regret. many did you eat? I ate eight. And you, you Gideon eight. ate eight. Okay. That's what I'm saying. We ate them at the same yeah. time as quickly as each I other. I feel like I want to eat 15. Oh, absolutely. Um, but but I, I should eat five or less. Five, I think, I think, will make me feel no good. But I feel like the safe number is three. So internally, I feel like my safe number would be four. Mm-hmm. I think I could eat four and be like, you know what? It tasted great. I'm going to be okay. Right. I'm not going to regret this It's hard this to eat three. You eat three, you don't even know it. Like, you're not even aware that you've eaten them yet. No, I mean, to me, it's like almost a single bite sandwich. Yeah, right. It's two bites, but you could get you them put down it, in one. Do you take two bites? I'm a two-biter. You, you're a two I feel like that's appropriate. You bite in half, then you turn it sideways, and you shove the second half down. Man, I could eat a White Castle right now. It's really good. I get a box of 10. Am I driving you right home tonight? Now. Yeah. 
Well, you're going to smell it because it's, oh, it's, no. it's in the van. Not a pleasant experience. It's in the van. Mm. I've got leftovers. What I should do is text my wife and tell her to turn the oven on. I've got leftovers from Roosters last night. We went to Roosters. Yeah. I think it's Roosters is overrated. I like it. It's okay. I'm just, I, right now, anything would be fine. White Castle me. would be delicious, although we don't have any locally. That's a shame. I it don't know. You can go to possible. Kroger's and get them in a frozen. No, you no, could. Listen. no. You no, could. No. <laughs> All right. Jason. Gross and bloated. Is gross and bloated. Yes. I am hungry and bloated. <laughs> Neither of us uh-huh. are on keto. Uh, no, no. No. I've been off keto since um, Thanksgiving. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the longest I've been on keto since Thanksgiving is like a week and a half. Okay. You know? Which isn't really quite enough no, to it's really not. get into it yet. It's like, what's the point? Having said that, mm-hmm. I wish I could get into ketosis. It's all about starting it, man. Like, once you started it, but like... It's... Once you're in the groove, right. you're in the groove. But if you're not, you're like, okay. Listen. Well, like last night, I I had kind of start. I'd, I'd gone a couple of days. I was doing pretty good. Yeah. And then we went to the movie last night, and we went to Roosters, and it was like... But you could... Roosters, you could eat keto. Yeah, but, you know, we got some appetizers, <laughs> and I got some fried mushrooms, mm. and some, like, fried onion-type stuff, mm. and the kids like fried pickles. Oh, yeah. And then their boneless wings kind of have a breading on them, yeah. and uh, Levi wanted to share some of those, so I did that. And then we had some time before the movie started, so we went to get ice cream. Oh, so yeah, and, you're not. You're you know, not I just got a tiny so. little scoop of ice cream. I was yeah. pretty proud of myself. Uh-huh. My new philosophy, and I've actually been doing pretty good on it, is just to eat half of what you would have eaten before. Take whatever you would have eaten before, eat half of it. Like if you're gonna go get ice cream, I would have gotten two, maybe three scoops. I'll just get one. You know what I mean? It's better than nothing. So um, I just got my tiny little scoop, but then Levi only ate half of his. I'm not gonna let that go to waste. You can't. Erica ate half of her butter pecan. You know, like. Shame on me if I throw any butter pecan in the in the trash can. Waste not, want not. So that was the problem. I should have gotten nothing and just eaten theirs. Anyway, every week we come in. Or every so often we come in, <laughs> and we have three things that we just have to talk about. And yes. that's what we call the three and three. Someday there'll be a catchy little thing for it, but there's not. And, you know, that's okay. But what's your first thing, Jason? This... Uh... This is government at its finest. Government. Government. I'm an anti-government guy. I know you are. I'm not like pure. I don't want anarchy. Yeah. Like I don't want Mm -hmm. lawlessness. Right. Mm -hmm. I think we need government, infrastructure, roads, Mm -hmm. you know. Why don't they put someone in charge, someone who's wise and and, and, and just and knows how to. I hate sand. It's hard. It's (laughs) coarse. It gets everywhere. (laughs) Okay, Anakin. Uh, So... The European Union uh-huh. is dictating uh-huh. that cars, specifically Tesla, yeah. has like probably the world's greatest electric car, start to put in artificial noisemakers <laughs> when driving <laughs> around pedestrians. Uh huh. I am so 100% anti. Pedestrians can hear them coming. And get Absolutely. Out of the way. So, so electric cars are completely silent. It's a great thing. It's a wonderful thing. Silence is one of my favorite things. Do you know, like, noise pollution is a real thing? Yeah. If you go to a, a large city, uh-huh. I mean, our the town that we live in, Yeah. listen, I mean, a couple of people have some bad mufflers. You can hear them going downtown. But there's not a lot of noise pollution. Mount Rushmore sounds. Muffler? <laughs> what do you mean? Whatever. A muffler, like, that's, like, half falling off. <laughs> He's like, you can hear it. <laughs> is it, like, a good sound to you? It's I was gonna a say, like, sound. Birds chirping. No, I was gonna say crickets. Okay. Mufflers. <laughs> I don't crickets. Think mufflers. I think mufflers on the, on the list. Mount Rushmore of sounds. Absolutely, it's a sound. People put different mufflers on for different sounds. Listen, we're not talking about car sounds. I'm talking about sounds in the world. I added crickets to the list. I've got insects Listen, and cars. We on We can there. talk about this for just a second, and your muffler is gonna get off the list, and we both know because I got two right off the right off the bat. Ocean waves. Yeah. That definitely belongs on the list. Crack of the bat. I'm okay with the crack of the bat. And I've got one more. Okay. And you're gonna you're gonna like this one. Oh wait, pop can opening. Oh, that's a really good one. But I think you might like this one even better. Coffee brewing. Oh. You hear the trickle. Okay, listen, muffler's of, gone. You hear the trickle of the thing. You yes. also hear that like kind of 
Uh huh. And then the slow drip. Gurgle and then the drip. It's the whole process of brewing of the coffee. Coffee Are we including the grinding of the bean? The whole thing. Okay, yeah. Why is that not like a a, a track that I can listen to? From beginning, I I do listen to it every morning when I make coffee. (laughs) Yeah, it makes me happy just to think about that. So, coffee brewing is a wonderful sound. Okay, coffee brewing, ocean waves. Ocean waves. Crickets. Crickets. Crack of the bat. Crack of the bat. All right, that's good. That's a Mount Rushmore of sounds. (laughs) Do we have to talk about the Tesla thing anymore? Well, it's completely I mean, ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's complete. Now, listen, you are. We need less government. <laughs> we need less government. Less. And when government comes up with stupid crap like this, mm-hmm. everybody loses. Right. Tesla did something incredible. Yeah, he did. They made a car mm-hmm. that is completely silent. Yeah. Does not add to the noise pollution. Yeah, and you would think that they would like Tesla because he's all green and crap. You know what I mean? He Although, is. Mostly. They say that running an electric car is like a bigger carbon footprint. Actually, it's not. Well, they wind turbines power the electric car. Do they? And solar? Do they? Panels? Yeah, absolutely. But that thing that the okay, listen. The battery. Listen, that's a whole separate conversation. Are you pro or anti windmills? I don't care. I think we need more windmills. Yeah, I mean, some all, people are very things. anti it. You I drive mean, through Siena County I, here in Ohio. Know, but there's tons of anti windmills. But they've done they've done the they've done the the math. Like what it costs to build the windmill. Technology is like, getting better. So you feel like we'll be able to harness that power. Oh, better, absolutely. More Put windmills efficiently. everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Free electricity. The wind is already blowing. We're just capturing it. Mm-hmm. You're not burning any fossil fuels in the process. Okay. I am pro windmill. I right. need more windmills. There's That's your, my number one thing. Your number one thing. More windmills. All right. My number one thing, Jason, is – well, I just came back from Montana. I've got two things. Big sky. Well, yeah, it's a big sky. Here's your Mount Rushmore of Montana things. Big Ma- sky. The big sky. Uh-huh. That's number one. Rocky Mountains. Two, the mountains. Three, grizzly bears. Yellowstone. Four, Yellowstone. So – um. Although Glacier National Park, some people say, is better. I don't know. I've not been there. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So I got a couple. It's also where Custer died. I got a couple things. I've been there. His last stand, yeah. Um, And there's a town called Custer. I mean, how crappy do you feel if you're Custer? You know what I mean? Like, there's a town. He's dead, so he doesn't really care. There's a town named after you based upon the place that you failed, you know? Miserably. I mean, he's not from Montana. No. Um,. So I've got two things, two Montana things to talk about. So the first one is um, I had a mission while I was in Montana. Was uh, So one of my first couple of nights there, um, my brother-in-law was watching this video about burning a stump. And okay. I was like, I've always wanted to Like do- on YouTube. Yeah, it was like a YouTube okay. video about burning a stump. I was I always wanted to do that, like try yeah. to burn a stump. That sounds like fun. And uh, my father-in-law Why was said, he watching a video on this because uh he's a pastor of a church and he's got a couple of stumps now outside his property oh he's he trying to figure out what to do with what am gotcha. i gonna do with these stumps so um i said uh i'd like to do that and my father-in-law said well we got that stump out there you know we cut the tree down last year if you yeah. want to try now it's a cut tree cut down last year it's not like this tree was cut down 10 years ago yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a green stump. still fairly green yeah so I lit the Lord of all fires like five nights in a row. I mean, yeah. I'm telling you, this fire was so hot. Like, you could not stand within 10 feet of it. I saw pictures of your daughter trying to roast Marshall. She's six feet away, laying on the ground, Yeah, like sweating her face. Yeah. It was like just – and, I mean, three nights, and the stump didn't even fall. You know what I mean? It was yeah. like three feet up in the air. It didn't even fall. Didn't move. And so then I got a big old drill bit, like, you yeah. know, and I drilled a bunch of holes in it. To and get then, some airflow. To get some airflow. And then that night, then I think the thing fell. But it's still, like, the stump was still pretty, you know, it was a pretty good size. I've been wanting to do that for a long, long bump time. Bump on the ground. Yeah. So then I drilled holes into it. I drilled, like, 20 holes into it. And I thought the embers will fall yeah. down. It didn't even barely make a difference. Did you pour diesel on it? Now, that's the thing. So they say that if you pour uh, vegetable oil on it, okay. like, a day before and let that let it set, soak up, yeah. it soaks up, it's a longer burning oil. Gotcha. And then that'll do it. Now, I didn't do that, you know, because I when are we going to go do buy this? a bunch of vegetable oil. I don't know. I have a stump in my backyard, so I'm we thinking about it. making it happen. But, uh, yeah, so... Um, we should video it, make a YouTube don't have, clip out of it. Yeah, those videos have... I actually watched a couple. They have a lot of views. Um, <laughs> I don't have anything else to say other than... You burnt a stump I, I in burnt Montana. a stump. It was fun. 
I just That's your thoroughly thing. enjoyed it. You said it. you had two things in Montana. Well, that'll be my next second thing. Oh. Do you want to immediately um, jump to it? Do you want me to? Sure. I went to a baseball game when I was in Montana. Billings Mustangs, rookie ball team for the Cincinnati Reds. They lost. Um, but, so the game was good. Yeah. Enjoyed it. It's I always love a baseball I like their park. It's a little park out there. It's real nice. We need to talk about baseball etiquette. As far as the players? As far as the fans. Okay. Baseball watching etiquette. At a game. You're at a game. Okay. You decide, it's the third inning, you decide, you know what I really want? I want to go get some peanuts, you know? Yeah. Or I need to use the restroom. What is the next process? Like, what are you thinking at this point? I wait for my home team to bat, and then I leave when the visitors are batting. But you leave in between the top and the bottom. Or yeah, you don't in, leave in the middle of an inning. You don't leave in the Unless middle of an inning. Unless if it's a split between the first and the top and the bottom. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It could be right in the middle of the inning, but not during play. But not during play. Right. Jason, I'm telling you, it drive, drove me crazy. The people in front of me, not just the people in front of me, all around me, I'm watching people, and I'm also in hot foul, foul ball territory where a, a screamer could come in at any moment. Knock you out. And kids are getting up and sitting down and walking, jumping over things. I mean, while the game is being played, there's no – I missed like three great plays because these idiots in front of me don't know that you don't get up in the middle of the – I mean, if it's an emergency, right? Like, yeah. But how often is that going to happen? You know, it, it, is, it is something that we need to talk about, baseball etiquette. First of all – People could and have, like, it's like, this is dangerous. People could be hospitalized. Yes, absolutely. You know what I mean? So you need to be, especially there, you need to be aware. But it is so unbelievably rude. In a game where every, what, five to ten minutes, you're going to have an opportunity to stand up. Wait for five or ten minutes. Yes. And if you go and you get yourself a hot dog or your peanuts or whatever, and you're walking back and you realize that game has started, what you do you do? You wait at the top of the You wait at That's the right. top of the stairs for that section of the inning to be over, top of the bottom whatever it is, and then you walk down to your seat, right? Absolutely. I'll get up 20 times if I have to but to let you through. But you're also okay for the guy coming down the stairs, beer here, um, to that, say, yeah, here's a beer, here's a dollar, that, give me a yeah, beer, all right, yeah, well, hot dog, I, I whatever, get it. cotton I get it. candy, That's okay. popcorn. I'm okay with that. That's okay. what then. But, like, you don't get up. You, you have a game. This is a game that you have 18 opportunities to get up. Top and the bottom. Right? In the Basically, middle. I'm, 27 you know, times. You, 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 is that right? Top, bottom, middle. I guess top and bottom would be yeah. the same. Yeah, so you have 18 opportunities, yeah. right, to get up and to, to walk by me to make me do the awkward stand-up thing. You know what? I'll, I'll stand up 18 times for you every game. I got no problem with that. I'll let you buy 18 times. I got no problem with that. I almost think the perfect built stadium maybe only has five seats, six seats in a row. Yeah. So right. it's not like 35 seats in a row well, that yeah. the guy and in the then, middle is going to have or, to Or And ideally, over. all the rows are really deep, so I don't even have to stand up, and you can just walk past. Well, that's even better. It just um, it annoyed me a lot. I the more and more I was getting more and more annoyed, you know. Eventually, and then I started explaining to Levi baseball etiquette very loudly, yes. louder than so you everybody know, around. Can, so, yeah. See, here's what you do, Levi. You don't make sure you don't get up, you know, because Levi said, oh, "I want to go to wait I, here." Levi, you gotta wait till the bottom of the inning because it's rude to get up in the middle of the inning. So you gotta wait, you know. And when you're coming back, just wait, make sure. He's like, "Okay, you know." No, you were that guy. I was that guy. And, by the way, the guy behind me, su super annoying as well, was like a jokey guy yeah. that for some reason felt like everybody wanted to laugh at his jokes. Yeah. You was know? he drunk? Um, he, I don't know. Because he, he came that way. He might have come. If he, if he was, then he came drunk. Yeah. Because he was that way. You were with me when we went to the Indians game, and yeah. that drunk guy was – That guy was super drunk. He was lit, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, I felt – I was like – Alcohol poisoning could set in at any moment. This guy could be dead. You could smell him from three rows and he away. Kept, it was the saddest thing. He kept yeah. on telling everybody it was his birthday. It could have been. And he was at the game by himself. Yeah. Plastered. Today is my birthday. I was so I bet it was his birthday. It probably was. I felt really bad for the guy. Yeah. You know, I do, as baseball etiquette, please don't spill beer on me. Yeah. I like to drink a beer. Uh -huh. I don't want beer spilt on me. Yeah. I don't want that. Yeah. I think that's gross. Right. You smell like beer. Yeah. Any other baseball etiquette? Do you have to stand up for the wave if it happens? If you're with your kids, I think it's appropriate. Okay. If it's you and me going to the game, I'm not going to stand up. I'm not standing up for that. 
Um, what about standing up at the like last at bat? Everybody yeah, oh, stands. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Home team, last at, last at bat. Everybody stands up. You can't um, get mad at the person in front of you standing. Seventh what inning about stretch. Other times standing up. Seventh inning stretch. What about like uh it's like um it's like oh, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the bottom of the sixth, and um, it's like a high-pressure situation. Yeah, you, you stand. You, it's, a, it's an okay time to stand. It's either we all or none. Okay. What about uh, uh, yelling at the players? Yes, that's appropriate. Completely appropriate. Completely appropriate. Throwing things at the players. No, inappropriate. not appropriate. Inappropriate. Got it. You stay off the field. There's an invisible wall. Mm-hmm. You're allowed to shout back and forth, Yeah. but you do not cross that line yourself. Mm-hmm. You do not throw anything over that line. So, and now in the age of smartphones and, you know, Wikipedia and information, like you do, do, is it on you as a visiting fan to find out everything about that left fielder's life? No, I don't. On a personal note, I don't think I would do anything personal. Like, you yeah. find out that his kid's name is Jimmy. You know what I yeah. mean? And you're like, hey, J- Jimmy. You know, eats toe jam. Yeah, that's yeah. inappropriate. No, that's not cool. Yeah. Um. Your mom went to college. Well, if you're quoting a movie, completely appropriate. Okay. I think shouting is completely fine. Okay. Within reason, uh, don't be vulgar. Reaching for a foul ball. Okay, so listen. Everybody needs to understand. Uh huh. You cannot interfere with the game. Your situational situational awareness mm-hmm. needs to be that. Okay. If you're in the outfield or if you're in foul ball territory, if mm-hmm. the home team is batting, if your away team is batting, mm-hmm. you need to be aware of all that stuff. And it, it takes – you have to think that stuff through, which is why you need to watch the game. Okay. And right. if you catch a foul ball mm-hmm. as an adult, yes, you give it to a kid. Yes. Every so time. So if you're there with your kid, you give it to your kid. That's right. But if you're there with just the bros, right? Yes. Then you, you find you a kid find in a front, kid you, you in front of you or behind you. Right. Yes. What if it's a an important home run? Like – Barry Bonds, five. Oh, I don't give it to a kid. I keep it. I sell it on eBay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if it's just a foul ball, like a random thing. Okay. What about okay. this? Yes. You're in the outfield. Visiting team. Visiting team. You catch a home run. You throw it back. There are no kids around you. Yeah. Do you throw it back? Even if there are kids around you, you throw that thing back. I'd be okay giving it to a kid. I guess it's okay. But I've always wanted Listen, to throw as back a dad, I know. I have to. As a dad, Didn't I know the what it means. Did hit? Did you see that? <laughs> yeah. That that yeah. was a heck of a throw. Yeah. As a dad, it's important for your kid to walk away with a I home run ball. I just love the throw the ball back statement. Yeah. It's such a This is We don't give a crap about you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's such a great statement. If there was a kid within reaching distance, I mean yeah. a couple rows, top or bottom, I'd give it to the kid. Yeah. I love the throw the ball back. That's a good one. All right. Um anything else? That's pretty much it. You get peanuts? Yeah. Shells go on the ground? Yeah. I mean, that's appropriate. That's part of the game. Do you share the peanuts with the people around you? I mean, if you came with them, yeah. Okay. I mean, you share whatever. Yeah. Hey, do you want some of these nachos? Or it's appropriate to ask. It's polite. Yeah. You you come with two or three guys. Hey, do you guys want anything? I'm going to go grab something. Right. You bring yeah. them back a beer or a right. nacho or a hot dog or whatever they want. Gotcha. 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 Um, is it appropriate to ask for autographs? That type of stuff. I mean, I think like before the game, you know, I, once the game has started, then no. And I've broken that rule myself. But <laughs> <laughs> and but, after the game, if they come to the sideline, uh-huh, yeah. yeah. But apparently, what about pictures? Apparently, and- if you're going to see the Billings Mustangs and Eric Davis is in the dugout, it's not okay to interrupt him in the middle of the game to ask if he could get an autograph. Yeah, that would. That's, yeah, I can't believe you ever did that. He's he wasn't even a coach. He was just there. You know it's I mean? Eric Davis. Yeah, right. That's why I want it. <laughs> okay, there's a new thing. We didn't have it when we were kids. Selfies. Pictures. Yeah. Do you take a selfie with the player? Uh, no, I, I want somebody to take it of me. I give my phone to somebody to say, hey, oh, yeah, see that. I hate yeah. selfies. And, well, okay, the other smartphone. Like, basically, baseball game is happening. Phone goes in your pocket. Yes. For I the mean, most part. I mean, if you're yeah. taking pictures, do, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah, take a picture for yeah. sure. Yeah, and post it in between the innings. Right. But while the game's happening, phone goes in your pocket. Yeah, I I mean, there's exceptions to the rule. Mm-hmm. Hey, text my wife, hey, you know, hey, we're running late. The ga- there's sure. a rain delay. But just in general. Like in general, put the phone away. Yeah. You don't need to scroll through Facebook. 
during this a baseball game. This is a game. public service that we're providing here. Absolutely. Baseball games would be more enjoyable if people understood these basic rules no, of fan editing. Baseball is a lost uh, art. I hate it. People don't I care for it anymore. It's a dying sport. I love it. It might be my favorite. So should they change the rule in baseball in order to make the game go faster that says once the batter has stepped into the batting box, that's it? Mike Hargrove was the human rain delay. Yeah. When he got up to bat, he stepped out between every single thing, refastened his gloves. Took I feel new like swings. everybody does that now. Well, yeah, but I mean, he was like the first guy to really stretch the pitcher I on that. Know. Nomar did a lot. I, uh, I don't mind it. And I don't mind the pitcher like taking his time. Mm. Take three minutes to throw yeah. it, take eight minutes to throw it, throw it over to first base 59 times. The one thing that makes baseball great is there's no time limit. Yeah. It is timeless. But we even... could be here for an hour and a half, or we could be here for eight and a half. Yeah. Okay. All right. What's your second thing? My second thing, uh, there's a menu item in somewhere in Iowa, I believe, the, the state of Iowa. Mm-hmm. On the menu item, under the sides that you can order with your main entree, there's an item called My Girlfriend's Not Hungry. Right. And for $4.50, you can get two additional side items mm-hmm. like extra mozzarella sticks and potato wedges yeah so that when you order i will yeah. take my steak i, I will take load of baked potato and my girlfriend's not hungry i could eat some so for four dollars and fifty cents sticks right now four dollars and fifty cents you get extra sides yeah. to feed your girlfriend or your wife or whoever you're with it's a good idea when she says i'm not hungry mm-hmm. and she still eats <laughs> half your food all these fries are so good <laughs> Cindy, aren't you supposed to be on a diet or something? Lay sure. off me. I'm starving. <laughs> I, uh, I am upset that I didn't think of this because this is the greatest That's a marketing great campaign a great menu idea. item ever. It's a great idea. I think I might just get uh, my girlfriend's not hungry. Mm-hmm. Two extra sides. <laughs> I love it. It's I think it's idea. great. It's, it's a great a very idea. very good idea. So there's no more conversation to that. No, that's it. No. It, it, Unless it, you do it, Mount Rushmore of side. Sides. Okay, let's do it. A Mount Rushmore of sides? Yeah, so you have your entree, you have your main meal, and then you get sides. So this is not an appetizer plate like a sampler. Mm-hmm. Right. Mount this Ru- is Mount Rushmore sides. Of sides. Yeah. French fries. Yes. Onion rings. Yes. Mozzarella sticks? I don't know if that's a side. I view that more as of more appetizer. of an appetizer. Yeah. Potato wedges. Or is that too much like French fries? I feel like, like we're going to be potato heavy here. You know what I mean? Because I think on mashed potatoes. What about side salad? Oh, side salad for sure. Okay. Okay, so side salad, french fries, onion rings. Get one more thing. Soup? Soup? You can get a side of soup? You can't get a, like a cup. They have yeah. a cup in a bowl. Mm-hmm. You get a cup you get of soup. Cup. Counts as a side. Or chili. Yeah, Depends I mean. on what you're eating. As you're you know, I mean, I was thinking thing. mashed potatoes. Oh, I do love some mashed potatoes. I love loaded mashed potatoes. Baked potato. A loaded uh, baked potato. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do loaded baked so, potato. So baked potato, French fries, onion rings, side, side salad. salad. Yeah. Done. All right. You want to do your third thing or me do my third thing? I will do my third thing. All right, what you got? My third thing. There is a lady. I, I love Walmart stories. Lady. Walmart uh, is the great American um, what they call, microcosm, what do they call that? Like if Petri you, if, dish. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I think it's more of a petri Walmart dish. Walmart is a petri dish of yep. America. Mm-hmm. And the bacteria that comes from it is <laughs> is infecting outrageous. all of us. It's yes. infecting all of us. Uh-huh. It's a microcosm. Okay. Am I using that right? I think you're if using you it. If you just right. walk in any Walmart, yeah. you'll get a picture of America. <laughs> oh dear God. <laughs> I hope that's not true. No, it is true. It is uh. absolutely No, it's true and you know it's true. Well, some of the better parts of America, you know. Are Walmart or not Walmart? Well, there are people, you know, I feel like rich people, like if I was really rich, I would never go to Walmart. I would avoid it. But yeah, I feel but like, like I that's have a to. very minor portion of the well, that's population. Part, that's part of the microcosm that you're so happy about. I'm just saying, you walk into Walmart, that's the <laughs> average American right there. Ouch. The guy in lane seven I wanted who's to... getting some Marlboros, and he's mad because they're out of the Marlboros in a box, and he has to give them in a soft pack. I want it to not that's... be true. but It is true. You might be right. There's a lady, lady. a lady who decided to grab a cake, birthday cake. Okay. As she's walking through the store. Uh-huh. She proceeds to eat it. 
When she gets to the checkout lane, half of the cake is gone. How's she eating this thing? Like with her hand? Listen. Did she grab a fork, you think? Probably. I mean, if they were cupcakes, I understand. You think she just grabbed a fork and she just opened I bet she the grabbed, thing up. Yeah, 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 she yeah. just kind of got it on her cart, on the top of her cart, and uh-huh. she's just shoveling just it in. Just walking through Walmart eating the cake. All right. She gets to the line Not to check out. Not how I would do it. You know? How would Obviously, you do this it? birthday cake wasn't for, I mean, it was just a, probably I'm going to eat this. It wasn't probably cake. an ice cream cake. Yeah. It's probably just a regular cake. Yeah. Anyhow, she gets to the checkout line, and uh, they ring it up, but she doesn't want to pay full price because half the cake is gone. Mm-hmm. She only wants to buy half the cake. Is this something? <laughs> <laughs> this is really something. Is this something that uh, that you've encountered or would consider doing yourself? Well, okay. Would you so eat a obviously product? Obviously, no. Listen, not a cake. Yeah. A cake is saying. So, like, this is something we're going through. We get a pack of granola bars. Mm-hmm. And my son's like, oh, I'm so hungry. We're coming home from a baseball game. It's 9 o'clock. He really didn't have dinner. He really yeah. is hungry. Mm-hmm. Open up the box, give him a granola bar. But I'm still going to scan the box and pay for the whole box. Right. But he's I've eating a thing granola bar. One of my back. kids is like feeling like sick to their stomach. Oh, yeah. And I get, get a, a box of uh, well, uh, uh, saltines. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so here, have some of these crackers. And But we pay for them yeah, all. You scan the box. I'm not and pay saying for them. I'm not going to pay for the stuff that, yeah. Right. Right. I would consider the same thing like 7 Up or a Sprite. Yeah. You just need something on your stomach. Yeah, like you're uh, not the good. thing that's, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. No okay, problem. so you're walking through the produce section. Yeah. There are grapes. Yeah. You pay per pound. Yeah. Do you sample grapes before you put them in the bag? You can pop a grape. One single grape. One grape. More than one grape is. Now what? you're just eating. What about <laughs> berries? Strawberries, pop a... raspberries, blueberries. I feel like, for some reason, I feel like a strawberry, no, and a blueberry, yes. Is it the size? I think it's the size because you get a big strawberry. So, like, if you if you go even further down that road, like eating an apple to sample, yeah, I feel it's, like an apple would be okay. too much, yeah, right? I feel like, I mean, unless the it's line an is... apple. No, yeah, no, I said apples no too to much. Apple. Apples too an much. An orange would be awkward. That's I mean, you got to peel it. Banana, banana. What are you gonna do with the peel? Yeah, celery. Um, yeah, I feel like a berry, a grape. A berry or a grape. Is okay. But not a strawberry. Yeah. So the line is somewhere between berry, grape, and strawberry. I'm not eating an avocado in the store. You know what I mean? Like, that's not happening. You know, I, I, I need to be savvy enough in my avocado picking ability to know how to pick a good one in the store, just by the feel of it, you know? (laughs) It needs to be firm, but not too firm. Yeah. Soft, but not too soft. Just right. Yeah. Um, are there any other things that are acceptable to partake of in the store? The other day, we went to Shields, which is like a sporting goods store okay. in Montana, and got my son some tennis shoes. He needed some tennis shoes. And um, he was going off with uh, some other people, and my wife and I were still going to stay there and shop. Yes. But he wanted to wear their shoes. So we said, uh, we'll just keep them on. Yeah. And we kept his old shoes in the box. Yeah. And then just scanned the box. Is that acceptable? I've done that. He, like, he walked no. He walked out without paying. It's not like he paid for them. No, you know, I, I was follow. There. I mean, um, he walked out 30 minutes before they got paid for. I don't know if I would do that. He was nervous, apparently. He told me he was pretty nervous walking out. That's pretty funny. Yeah. I could see him being like really, yeah. really nervous. Ugh. Like looking yeah. around. That's partially why I was like, yeah, it's totally cool. I just wanted to see what would happen. And I would have loved it if he had gotten stopped and yeah. somebody asked him. It would have been great if you called security and said, listen, <laughs> I'm sending my son. Swarm, swarm. Oh, that would be so yeah. great. That would be really funny. Um, no, I think that's acceptable. But mm-hmm. that, I mean, the line is right there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Any packaging. Book. You're in a bookstore. Ooh. Can you take it to the bathroom? And, you know. While you're and on the what? John, while you're on the John, just flip through the pages. So, like some of the bookstores, like Barnes and Noble, uh-huh. like there's couches and the stuff. You can just grab a book, sit there, and read. Is that acceptable? Like, is this acceptable? Why are there couches I, there? I go to the same Barnes and Noble every day and yeah. go to the bookshelf and pick up the same book, and for like a week. Do you put a bookmarker in it? <laughs> <laughs> like, if it goes back on the shelf and the bookmarkers, right? You know, yeah. I mean, I just feel like it, it wears down a book to. Like, you know what I mean? Why are there couches in Barnes & Noble? Well, so that I can sit down and read, like, a, you know, uh, like a chapter of it to see, oh, yeah, this is really getting me. I want to buy this. I feel like after that, buy the book. I feel like, I mean, they have coffee shops and couches. Well, this you, is so basically buy a, a library. Buy a book and sit down and read it. Sit there. And, it's yeah. not a library. It's basically a library. It's not a library. 
<laughs> I can't think of any other etiquette when it comes to things like that. Tennis balls pop open. You're, uh, that, you're, you're in a greenhouse. Can you pick a flower? Like sniff it. To, you, know? I, you know, I went to go visit someone at the hospital the other day, uh-huh. and uh, I didn't have anything with me. Yeah. Okay, so I, I like to bring something, a card, sure. a flower, something. Et- etiquette. And uh, there was a rose bush outside mm-hmm. uh, the hospital. On the hospital property. On the hospital property. Mm-hmm. Take a little knife, a little clip, bring them a rose. Hmm. They didn't know the difference. They don't know the difference. They don't know the difference. Don't know the difference. Brought them oh. a rose. Okay. Is that uh, okay, you think? You feel yeah, good about it's that? absolutely okay. The, it's outside the <laughs> hospital. It's a rose bush. I mean, it's hospital property at that point. Listen, that flower is going to die. Mm-hmm. I'm saving the flower. I mean, it's going to die one way or the other. Mm. Now it's going to be I'm used bringing, for a good use. It's going to be used for a good use. All right. Uh, I feel like... Tell me you've never done that. Well, I have, of course. I've never done that. But, um, you know, I feel like that's on the line, but not egregious enough to, for me to completely call it flowers out. Flowers are everywhere, everywhere. It's not like eating an avocado in the produce section and certainly not eating half of a cake. I'm not stealing anything because they're not selling the flowers. <laughs> well, actually, they have a gift shop where they sell flowers inside the hospital. So, you know. Yeah, but they're not harvesting those flowers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my third thing and the last thing, and then we'll do our Netflix suggestion of the week. Um, I got this list here. Of uh, owners of uh, national uh, or not, not national owners of uh, professional professional baseball teams yeah. or basketball teams or NFL teams that are celebrities. Like, hey, did you know that you know Michael Jordan is a partial owner of the Hornets, or yeah. that um, Burt Reynolds was once a partial owner of the Tampa Bay Bandits, or did you know that LeBron is partial owner of uh, Liverpool, Liverpool, right? Or Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith, partial owner of the 76ers. That uh, Elton John is a partial owner of Watford's, uh, Watford FC. Really? You know? I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. Uh, Drew Carey, partial owner of the Seattle Sounders. Did you know that? You know, owning a major league soccer has got to be the worst. Oh, yeah. Of all the professional sports, right? Miserable. Which yeah. would you rather own, major league soccer or hockey? Hockey, okay. I'm, I'm just thinking, what's the what? What would be worse than Major League Soccer? I mean, you make a lot more money on a hockey team than you would on an MLS. It's not just about money. I mean, worse than Major League Soccer, like yeah, professional like what cricket, women's soccer. Is that a thing? <laughs> it is, but not really. Uh, there's a professional women's softball league. Did you know that? No. Yeah, that would not be great. No, I would not want to own that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my question. To you is what is the best kind of sports franchise to own? You're a billionaire. You okay. Am I doing of... this for profit? Um, here's the situation. You're a billionaire. You don't need it. You got to. You know. You, you don't need this thing to make money. That's I'm not doing, you're doing it for it. fun. You're doing it because you know what? I want to buy a professional team, and I want to have the perks that come along with that. Um, what is the best situation? Okay, so my introduction. Let me back up. Three years ago, I would have said baseball. Give me a 30% ownership of the Cincinnati Reds yeah, or whatever. Kansas City Royals, Cleveland Indians, whatever. That would be a blast because baseball – I grew up on baseball and I love baseball. Yeah. My introduction into soccer uh, I think has influenced me to the point that I think it would be awesome yeah. to buy a piece of Sunderland football. Yeah. Like a League One – yeah. Or championship and like ride the highs and the lows yeah, of yeah. being promoted and move to London. Oh my gosh. Buy Crystal Palace. Well, like I would like to buy a lower league team. You would and then try to try to promote it. Yeah. Get it promoted. I mean if you're like a bill, billionaire like blah blah blah. Oh billion, well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, then th- then you buy a lower buy Nottingham Black Forest. Pool. Bless you. Excuse me. Right? Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. I mean, I just think because that would be of the awesome. Uh, promotional yes. aspect of it yes. that you can take this team with this super rabid fan base that they've been fans of this team for a hundred years or more. Yes. Like their father, say, their grandfather. You say, you know what? I'm yeah. taking you guys to the promised land. Yes. Today we're barely beating, you know, uh, I don't know, whatever rent leads, but tomorrow we're going to be head to head with Manchester city. Yes. Like, you know, this is the future and yes. I'm going to take you there. Yes. That's pretty and everything that comes with it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That that's would be a cool. blast. You move to London. You live there. Yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> Maybe not London. I mean, because London has the big teams. All right, so let's go but, America. Yeah. Now that's because okay. I, I agree with you. Now, Worldwide, now, that would be it, right? Yeah. Okay. Now America. You know, like NASCAR. What own a car? I own a car. <laughs> I'm not going to race it. No, I no NASCAR. I could care less about NASCAR. Um, Here's it would thing. probably it would probably still be baseball. I think basketball would be cool because it feels like you get up and close with the players. And I feel like in basketball you could have more say. Like there's so many players on a baseball team, and it's so involved. I feel like in basketball I could. Um, I don't know, have more of a say in the in the operation of like hiring or bringing players on and making trade. Like I'm going to hire somebody that's good at what they do, but I also I'm the owner. I want to say in this. So if you're a partial owner of the Memphis Grizzlies, right. You can say, "Hey, listen, Clay Thompson is going to be a free agent. Yeah. What can we do to yeah. get Clay Thompson?" Yeah, I want to be in those discussions. I want to be in those rooms cuz I'm the owner of the team, you know? Now, are you are we talking 100% owner or partial owner? Well, I'd like to be a hundred percent owner, of course. You know, so you're going to be Jerry Jones. You're going to micromanage Mark everything. Cuban, Jerry Jones, yeah. Al Davis. That's me. That's George Steinbrenner. Why own the team if you can't do that? <laughs> it's a play thing. You hire to people, them. yeah, to do it better because yeah. you don't know. You, you don't, don't know. You don't know what I don't know. <laughs> I feel like basketball. In, okay. In, from an ownership well, okay. standpoint, so would be if, a lot. If of fun. you want to have your fingers on the product, that's partially what I want to do. Then, then basketball is probably your best shot. I mean, I do. I'm more of a baseball guy, as far as a fan goes. The whole experience. But if you know what, if I own the, you know, Kansas City Royals. No, I was going to pick a basketball team, Memphis Grizzlies. So if I own the Cleveland Cavaliers, I'm also going to be sitting in box seats for every Indians game. But you, know you could mean? do that in baseball too. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. There's just some, I just that's that's just that's my answer. Basketball. That's my answer. American football. To me, that's not as fun. I, I don't know why. It's just I don't know. I mean, there's just so much happening in football. It just I don't know. I, I would feel more distant from it. Winning a Super Bowl is like yeah, you the highest stand up of the there high. And hold no, up yeah, the, the thing and the, yeah. I mean, of all, I mean, I'm this, not saying I'd hate it. I'm just saying if I got a pick, it's my third of American sports. Okay, you I'm know? okay with that. That's fine. Yeah, and then maybe, maybe hockey, maybe MLS after that. Then it kind of there's a real drop off. You own a golfer. Yeah, like if I could own, you know, like. Uh, Phil Mickelson. Phil Mickelson. You know what I mean? Like, can I? You're own, mine now. Can I own Bubba Watson? <laughs> it's called slavery. So, it was done away with a long time ago. So that's a negative. That's a negative. You can't own people anymore. Really? Yeah. I mean, it used to. In some parts of the world, you still can. Hmm. Not here. Hmm. It's highly frowned upon. <laughs> highly frowned upon. All right, Jason. What is your Netflix suggestion of the week? I watched this last night. All right. It's called Gollum. And Gollum. no, not that Gollum. Gollum. Your son at age four did an excellent impression of. Yeah, well, of he was a dead ringer as far as physique goes. I mean, yeah. you know, he's a toothpick, <laughs> he he crawling around on hands and his uh-huh. uh, feet. Um, so juicy, sweet. <laughs> so it's the story of a lovely lady, a lovely lady, <laughs> who was bringing up no, uh, Lithuania, sixteen hundreds. There's a small Jewish town or village, Uh and there's a neighboring group Mm -hmm. that were Gentiles. Oh. And these Gentiles were getting sick. Okay. Like the leader's daughter got really, really sick. The Jews are not getting sick. He brings his daughter to the Jewish village and say, you brought this disease on us. Mm. You guys aren't sick. We are sick. Obviously, something is going on here. You are going to get my daughter healthy. Your God is going to get my daughter healthy, mm. or I'm going to kill you all. What's the name of this movie? It's called Gollum. Okay. So there's a lady in this Jewish village that decides to um, go through the Kabbalah and create a Gollum mm-hmm. from the mud 
and spells and rituals and this mm -hmm. like invincible creature rises up out of the mud and wow. kills off all of Boy, the this Gentiles. took a turn that I was not expecting. It's really weird. Yeah. And uh, it's fascinating. Now, where do you watch this? Netflix. Okay. It's my Netflix suggestion of the week. Well, it's not always the case. Mine's not. Um, I, I don't know if it's a true story or not, but uh, I'm sure it's partially based on you the truth. You don't know if it's well, a true story. Well, I don't know if it's a true story or not. Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Well, we don't I'm know just gonna this. Say, I'm just, I'm just going to say it's probably not. Were there Jews in Lithuania in the 1600s? As far as I know. And Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So that part is at least confirmed. Whether or not a random lady raised up a golem creature out of the mud using rituals and spells from the Kabbalah, yeah. I can't prove or disprove that. Okay. But it's a fascinating story. It's actually pretty – it's a Netflix original. Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty well done movie. It's low budget. I mean it's not like it's a Hollywood production piece that was you know $50 billion in the making. Yeah. It's a decent movie. I liked it. Gollum. And it's, it's, How do you listen, spell it? G O L U M. Okay. Whatever Gollum. Um, I am fascinated by things like that. You are. I am. You love the supernatural. Yeah. You got I mean, your super. It's great. You got your natural. That's pretty good. You put those together. Supernatural. You got yourself a supernatural. <laughs> Come on. Um. All right. My Netflix suggestion of the week. I am very excited. Because every once in a while, one of us will come across a documentary that you just know you're going to love this. Well, you and I are both documentary people. Uh, like what? Did, like when I gave you the um, – The Price is Right. Well, you gave me the Price is Right one. That which was just really great. Good. I gave you um, the the dude uh, uh, who like um, was like killing animals, the trapper. Oh, yeah, yeah, I gave yeah. you that one. It was on Amazon, yeah. That one was pretty good. Um, so every once in a while you see one. Oh, I gave you the surrounding game. Uh, that, that one was, was pretty good. good. One, yeah. Uh, this 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 is a good one. It's called Art and Craft. Okay. It's about this guy. His, Where can I watch this? Um, well, so here's the thing. Oh, my gosh. It's weird. I've never seen this before. It's not Amazon Prime, but you can watch it on Amazon free with ads. It's like an IMB TV thing. Okay. So can I do this on my TV? I think so. Through... I watched it on a computer. Oh, gosh. But I'm telling you. You, okay. I'm okay. telling you to watch okay. it. Okay, okay, it, okay. It was a PBS documentary originally. So maybe you can find it on like a PBS app or something. Okay. It's a – PBS has like a series called POV, and it's one of the POV documentaries. Point it's of like view? Hour, yeah. Okay. It's like a, an hour and a half maybe, I think. Art and craft. So there's a guy named Mark Landis. Mark Landis is the world's probably maybe greatest art forger. He Ooh. forges – Okay. Famous paintings, drawings, things like that. Yeah, he's phenomenal. I've got. I'll pull it up here and show it to you. Uh, I've got his Mona Lisa. Like you look. I mean, it's like amazing. Dead on. It's what he does. Yeah, he's very eccentric. He's been diagnosed as schizophrenic. Even. Yeah, um, he's got some issues. There's no doubt about that. Kind of a tiny, kind of squirrely little guy with big ears, and you know, kind of like odd, just very odd person. But here's the twist. He's demon possessed. Yes. No. Here. Maybe. He could be. He could be. That's a uh, schizophrenia. There's right? a supernatural issue yeah. right there. He uh, does not try to sell these things. What's he do? He uh, makes up a story, uh, pretends to be a philanthropist. Okay. Shows up at a museum and offers to donate it to the museum. <laughs> okay. And he does. Okay. And they take him because – Because they think it's the original? They think it's the original. And okay. why would anybody do this, by the way? He's not asking for money. You know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, not yeah, even. Yeah. Why would your suspicions antenna even be up? Yes. Right. Well, and because he's so good, and he's done this quite a few, and he's got a, some different stories. Sometimes he acts like a priest. Uh, one of his famous stories that he tells a lot is he that, found one in a yard sale. Uh, I don't think he does that one. One is that his sister recently was deceased, and it was in her like attic. Um. Well, no, it was in her like whatever, her estate. Okay. And he's going... So he always wants to act like a rich person usually. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So he can fit in. And um, Washington, D. Smithsonian. Washington, D.C. Smithsonian. Yeah. The, 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 the Philadelphia um, yes. you know, art yeah. museum. Like museums all around the world have this guy's paintings hanging in them. Wow. Because they don't know. Now people are starting to get smart and starting to figure some things out. But he's been very successful. Well, somebody at the Oklahoma Museum, Oklahoma City Museum of Art, 
yeah. like found out, and then he made it like his mission in life to basically put a stop to this. Like, I'm not going to let this guy do this. Yeah. Thing. But the thing is, what he's doing is not illegal. <laughs> because forgery is a crime, but in order for it to be forgery, he has to make money from it. He's living in this little tiny apartment. He's not making any money off of this stuff. He's just doing it as like a hobby, and this is what he and, – and basically what the law says is like, well, it's on the museum to make sure that what they to hang up – To authenticate. Yeah, they got to authenticate it. If they do or don't or whatever, that's on them. It's not a crime. So he's not Man. breaking any laws. I'm telling you – because this other guy that comes up with this Oklahoma City guy, this the documentary like it turns into that. It, it turns into that a little bit. It's it's always about this Mark Landis guy primarily, but this guy it starts to become more and more like this guy. I actually think this guy's got a bigger problem than the Mark Landis guy. And I don't. I'd be. I so he, talk the, to the good guy it. becomes the bad guy. The good guy becomes the bad guy. Yeah. Uh huh. And the bad guy, the forger, is like totally the good guy. So he's I mean, Robin Hood. You feel bad for him, yeah, because he's got mental he's, issues and, and yeah. whatnot. But uh, he seems to really enjoy what he's doing. <laughs> 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 and um, and uh, anyway, it culminates. I don't want to give the whole thing away, okay. but it is riveting. It's okay. very well done. It's called Art and Craft. Okay. And, um, POV, PBS, original documentary. Okay. Um, it's fascinating. I'll click the link on the podcast. Mark Landis yeah. is the guy. I'll name. trust that you'll get the right link up there somewhere. Uh, don't, I don't know. Don't trust me too much. But it, anyway, okay. it's really, really good. And you'll thank me for watching it. So Can I tease my next week's Netflix? You can do whatever you want. Have you ever heard of the name Bob Lazar? No. Okay. I'll talk about Bob Lazar next week. Oh, that's, just, that's your tease? Yeah, Bob that's Lazar. It? That's not much of a tease, a name. Listen, if you know Bob Lazar, it's a thing. He kind of sounds like a bad guy from Star Wars, but it's one word, Bob he, Lazar. Bo- <laughs> Bob, first name. Yeah. Lazar, last name. He Okay, so very briefly, like he is personally responsible he's like, for – <laughs> Exposing Area 51 to the public. Oh, one of these. Gotcha. That's all I talk about. Okay. That's all I watch. <laughs> well, if it doesn't have aliens, Bigfoot, UFO, supernatural, I don't watch it. I get you super. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? Bob Lazar is like single, like nobody ever heard of Groom Lake or S4 or Area 51. Like it wasn't a thing. And he exposed it. He blew it wide open. Had proof. I like the fact that Bob Lazar sounds like a bad guy from Star Wars. Bob Lazar. Listen, J- Jabba the Hutt died. You know? Bob Lazar took over. But, but, I mean, don't think that things are better because now this is Bob Lazar. <laughs> Bob Lazar is worse than Jabba the Hutt ever was. You don't even want to. You don't want Bob Lazar to even know you exist. Yeah, well, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> he took over the gambling debts. Mm-hmm. Bob yeah. Lazar did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's got his own bounty hunters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I don't have anything else. Do you? No. All right. Well, that's a show. Comment, rate, subscribe. Please. How can you find Lower Road Radio? I assume if you're listening to it, you've already found it. Oh, that is true. <laughs> How would you suggest uh huh, getting your friends to listen to it? I would just say there's the thing. It's a podcast, uh, Lower Road Radio, and send them a link, you know? To That's what? what I do. I send people links to podcasts all the time that I listen to. Hey, you should listen to this episode. Let me send you the link. Okay. I should try that sometimes. Share it to social media. Yeah. You could do that. All right. Well, this is Dan signing off for Jason, reminding you to always keep your stick on the ice and never wear the blue sweats. Thank you.